welcome back to another video uh what we're doing this week we have got a new t6 in for a combi conversion customers brought some seats and some brackets and uh i'm here to fit them so what we're going to do make that triple fit in there this should be quite easy it's got a rubber mat rather than ply and both have got ply already down it makes it a lot harder to fit the brackets so we're gonna remove the v-dub bulkhead the customers fitted and start the process of getting it all all done where my first challenge is to get the seat belt bracket mounted in there so i'll uh from when i've seen an original combi i've measured the height so i know the height on an original combi is there i've marked it i'm gonna drill a hole and get that in and I'll uh, show you how I do it. I've got the plate in and uh, I'm just riveting it in. Let me just get the last one in. All the edge I've touched up with primer and I've rubbed some primer around the rivet before I put it in so when it squeezes up, all the paint gets oozed over the shiny metal. And that's it, and I've touched up that edge. And that's one seat belt ready to go. Um, I can't give away all my secrets because I won't make any money that way. But if you want to know how I did that, give me a message and we can sort something out. Okay, on to the next one. Same process again to get this uh, bracket on the inside of this side panel. Now, when you fit the, the top buckle, make sure that washer's on. Otherwise, if you don't have the washer, when you put it on and tighten it up, you'll squash the the bracket and the buckle won't be able to swivel. So you need to put the washer on and then uh, it'll be fine. A lot of kits, like if you buy the seat belts second hand, that little washer will be missing. So go to the a DIY store or something and buy a washer and you want it. Not sure. You want one. That fits over the thread, but doesn't go past the collar. Okay. So you see, yeah, that can swivel freely. It's even more important when the van's been carpet lined because the carpet gives it a bit of extra thickness. And if the seat belt can't swivel, that's not incorrectly. And it's the same on the bottom. There's a, a washer for here that slides over the thread and then it stops at the collar. And then that's what gives this so it can turn. So when it's on, it can swivel like that when you're wearing the seat belt. As you can see, with the washer on, that stops the bolt pin pinching this so it can move freely like it's meant to. Same with the top one, both are on now. So now I'm gonna jack the van up, put it on stands and do the floor brackets. It's the next day for me, and I've um, got in early, got the van jacked up, removed the under trays and the floor. I'll just switch the camera around and show you what I've been up to. So the van's on the axle stands. Um, it's easy enough to remove all the necessary plastics from underneath. A couple of bolts, maybe eight millies. With some of these, um, the newer vans have an add blue tank, which when you do a full three seat conversion in the back, you definitely need to drop that to drop the, the, the main tank properly. But with the triple seat, there's only two brackets in the middle. And I might see if I can get away with just lowering the tank a little bit so I can get my hand in rather than dropping it even more to get, when you want to get these two brackets in, you've got to have the tank right down out of the way. Um, but this bracket here, when you just lower the tank, you've got um, more access. So I might not need to remove the add blue tank, which will make life a lot easier for me. So now I've got to drill the holes in the floor. As you can see, you can get the bracket. It's got the dips in it, like in a normal combi, apart from it just hasn't got the holes. The bracket, oh, 
Let's get some light on there. Goes like that. I'll mark where the studs are, then drill the hole. And the bracket goes, if you look, the hook is off center. So that goes towards the front of the van. Not that way. It wouldn't matter if you made a mistake drilling holes, as long as when you bolt the back right in, you've got it the right way around. Well, it's a bit cramped, but as I thought, I was lucky enough I didn't need to remove the add blue tank. Just lowering the fuel tank has given me enough access to get to the, the bolts that are just above the tank. And those ones there. So now I'm happy. I've load the tank and I'm not gonna hit anything. I'll carry on and drill those holes to the right size and then I'll show you the brackets I'm gonna put underneath. So just to show you, undo the straps. We undo the middle strap, then you can put your jack there to support the tank. Then you can undo strap at each end, lower it down. The fuel tank, the red, the light sign is practically empty. And I've just supported it with some blocks of wood. But if I was doing a full combi with the seat brackets on the edge, I need to get up there. So you need to drop the tank fully by undoing the neck and letting the, the front half drop. And this is where the add blue tank now is a pain because to allow the neck to drop, you need to lower the add blue tank as well, which is, just adds more time and a bit more awkwardness when you're lying on the floor. But that's what it is, isn't it? That's the holes cut and then just some black paint around the, the edge. And I'll do the, the square because when the, the seat bracket's in, the seat, bracket's, the seat bracket is black. And then to see a, a white or silver floor through it looks a bit tacky, I think. So I paint it all black. So it just looks nice. Now, luckily this customer had the rubber mat, which is quite rare for a panel van. So I just need to cut the holes for the, the seats. Now, as you can see from the underside, um, where every bracket is, is marked. So I just need to cut the four out and then flip this back over and put the brackets in. So that's the floor back folded down. I've cut the holes in the mat. Now, if you can see, got the brackets back in. And then just see how it looks a bit nicer of a black floor rather than the silver showing through. So next up is we've got to put the, that's a V-dub after, uh, V-dub accessory bulkhead for the, for the back of the van. Now I've got to put that in first because it comes in from the front. You can't get it in from the back. So that's going to go in before the seats. I'm going to just lift it in just to give me a bit more room around the workshop and then do the brackets underneath and cut back in. So I've got the seat in. I've done the brackets underneath and the bolts. So I'm just going to show you the underneath. But if you're doing a van, a seat for the first time, I would always suggest to put the seat in before you put everything back together underneath, just in case for some reason you've got one of the brackets the wrong way round or you've just done something wrong and the seat doesn't fit, then you'll know before you've put everything back and then you've got to take it all out again and turn the bracket around or something daft like that. Um, I'm just going to climb underneath and I'll show you underneath so that's the four brackets on underneath now these are original brackets you'll find them on a factory combi and i've wax oiled that before behind and in front there's plenty of wax oil on there and really i've seen some poor conversions where they haven't put the plates in as you can see where the plate grabs around the the member gives a bit of strength and that's copying the original how uh, an original van would be okay i'm going to start the process of 
putting everything back and uh, putting the van back on its wheels. That concludes my fitting rear triple seat. Um, if the video has been helpful or if you want to ask me any questions, please ask away and it would be helpful for a thumbs up. Okay, thank you very much. See you in the next one.